Hi, welcome to my kitchen. Um, my name is Shannon Gilmore and today we're going to talk a little bit about garlic. Now everyone knows that garlic is an amazing substance. It's a blood thinner, it lowers your cholesterol levels, uh, it's antifungal, anti-yeast. Um, it's a great source of prebiotics for uh, bacteria, so it's good fuel uh, for the microbiome in your gut. Um, but what most people don't know about garlic is that it's an amazing vegetarian, it's a vegetarian source of sulfur. And why is sulfur important? Well, there's a lot of pathways that happen in your body that are vital to human health. And the sulfation pathways need sulfur in order to do that. So as an example, uh, there are over 80,000 chemicals that your body is exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis. So your detox system is key when you have to um, deal with the onslaught of the air, the water, the food, the home, you know, the paint on the walls, uh, your office space. These are all things that are sort of inundating you on a daily basis. The detox system cannot happen unless you have properly functioning sulfation processes, okay? And that requires sulfur. So garlic isn't the only one. You can also do things like um, onions or uh, shallots, shallots, or you can do leeks. Uh, these are all great sources of um, sulfur. But today we're gonna focus a little bit on the garlic because I find it the most cumbersome to deal with, to be honest. Um, so I love garlic, but I struggle a little bit with peeling it and you know it's something that I would recommend to all my patients on a regular basis you know and I would even say try to get two to three cloves if you can or switch it up with uh, garlic and onions or leek and garlic I would just say try to get two to three four servings of this a day into your diet and sometimes we are just super busy and that's not going to always happen unless it's convenient so I thought I'd discuss about three different ways to sort of quickly deal with the cumbersome nature of garlic and their peels. Um, one way obviously is what you do with chefs, which is they take a big old knife, they put it on your cutting board, flatten it out and then bam, you know, hit the heck out of it. It's a good stress reliever. Um, the garlic goes all over the place and uh, some of the juices do come out so don't touch your eyes, uh, but it does remove the peel from it. But another and quick way to do this that I thought I would suggest is uh, for people that are really on the go, get some pre-parade, pre-portioned sort of cubes of garlic. This is super helpful if you are just quickly making a frittata in the morning, um, if you are wanna just make a quick stir fry before you go out, like it's just a great way to add the garlic into your diet. And the only downside to it really is that it comes in some type of plastic container, which because it's not being heated, it's usually just raw and put it in, into uh, the freezer. It's not as um, detrimental to your body. And I would say the benefits of garlic far outweigh sort of the small amount of phthalates that are going into the garlic. Um, but that's another way of doing it. And then the third way is uh, microwaving it, believe it or not. Uh, what you do is, and I'm not a huge fan of microwaving, I wouldn't encourage it all the time, but I will say that if you throw this little thing into the microwave for just about five seconds, just a teensy little zap, um, what happens is that the oils come to the surface and the, the peel just slides right on off, okay? So these are three different ways to kind of help encourage you to get more garlic um, and basically sulfur into your diet. Um, but garlic is also an indicator also of something maybe going wrong too. So I wanted to bring that up as well because uh, if you are having sort of, if you eat like a heavy garlic meal and you're having sort of a ton of flatulence or like really stinky gas that like you're clearing the room and the dog is dead and you know, you can't even stand yourself, uh, that is usually or could be a sign that you've got some type of dysbiosis in your stomach. Because remember I said this is a prebiotic. So it's fuel for bacteria in your stomach. So if you're like dumping this in and you're having that strong a reaction, which is not normal by the way, um, then you may want to like take a look and go see a functional doctor or come see me and we can kind of work that out. Usually it means you've got some kind of overgrowth um, in your gut, okay? Uh, the second thing on the red flag to look for is if you're having any type of histamine-like reaction. So if you're having like a big pesto meal or you've had a huge garlic meal and you sort of are reacting as if you have allergies. So you're wheezing, maybe your asthma flares up, your eyes maybe get bloodshot, you're getting like itchy, any kind of hives, anything like that. That's usually, that can be a sign 
of you might have some type of genetic mutation in your actual detoxification pathways, okay? Uh, I know these are big words and stuff, but um, basically that just means that there's something a little off genetically maybe that's being expressed, the SNP is being expressed, and what's happening is that the pathways aren't fully uh, going through to the end point, which they should be, okay? So that's why you get sort of some sort of, it's similar to like when you drink wine and you turn red. It's, there's sort of these like histamine-like reactions, and it might be an indication that something's a little funky in your um, detoxification system, okay? So if this sounds anything remotely similar or familiar to you, um, then come see me at thirdeyenutrition at gmail.com or go see a functional doctor who can also help you. Um, and you can always visit me at uh, thirdeyenutrition.com. So go have some pesto this weekend and go find out. Have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see each other next week. Bye.